Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to Oracle Database Administration course. Uh, in this today's topic, we'll go with the, some of the uh, you know managing steps of my uh, table spaces and how data internally stores inside my table and how uh, you know my uh, you know how we can manage my table space, how how data will grow inside my table space, and then you know how I can sync the data, how I can increase the data of my table space. And then we'll, we'll understand deep dive into the uh, internal part of my table space and how exactly data stores inside my database. Because we have seen so many, so far we have seen so many topics on administration and management and uh, installation architecture, you know, so all we are familiar with that. Now we will deep dive into the internal parts of my database. So that is managing your uh, database storage structure. So what that means is, you know, how the data is stored inside uh, my, uh, you know, uh, uh, inside the blocks of my table space. As I already explained, you know, data will be stored as a blocks. It's a 8K block by default. And you know, combination of blocks makes uh, you know extent, and combination of extent make the segments, and combination of segments makes uh, table space, and then the combination of table space makes my database, right? Suppose if I take one particular table space, this is my table space A. I can say uh, inside that table space, I'll be having a segment, segment one, segment two, segment this one, segments. So each segment, you know, having its particular uh, database object. For example, this segment has table A, and this segment has a table B. And if I take this particular table B here, uh, table B will be having a number of columns and number of rows, right? So, you know, that that particular representation of the table, like number of rows and number of columns. And these number of rows and number of columns are basically, you know, uh, made up of, you know, the data blocks, that is 8K blocks. And then, you know, combination of these all 8K blocks will make my uh, extent. You can see, right, this, this particular row and this particular row, these all rows are besides under this particular block. And this particular row is besides under this particular block and combining, and there are so many blocks I can say, and combination of all these blocks will make an extent. And this extent, group of this extent will be uh, resides under my one segment and a group of these segments will make my table space. And, and th these are like, you know, these are like basically a row piece, like this entire row will be part of this particular block. And again, this entire row, it's again a uh, row piece that will be part of this particular block. And one block can have, you know, one or two rows based upon the how big is that row size is, right? And then, uh, you know, this, this row, if it is a big enough, it is too big enough, then it cannot fit on my one block. That row can spread across the other block. For example, assuming this row two has a very big, and I cannot write entire row into the one block. So what happened? Half of the row will be returned to one block and another half of the row will be returned to another block. That is also possible. That is called, you know, row chaining and row migration. There are other steps will come. We'll look into that in later part. So one, one, one way is like if the row is big and that will be split across two blocks. And if row is small, both the row can be fit into one block. You can see this row one and row two is very small. Both are available in my one block. So those are called row pieces. So all the blocks, the combination of all these blocks will make the extent. And then those group of extent makes my segments and those segments will be assigned to my table B. For example, this is the table B and it has a, a three extent, like, you know, one extent it's allocated with this and another two more extent, which are free because this table, uh, you know, whatever this table, is the entire table is this table B is fit in one extent alone and the extent two is free. So if we have some more data we added into this particular table, the extent two will be written. So the group of those extent will make my segments and group of segments will make my table space. That is like how internally data is stored. The moment whatever data you write here, uh, assuming that this is one extent and one extent has these many blocks here and this is a table B and table B is uh, you know, I return most of the data and then that is entirely fit into extent one. And then if I add a one more row and there is no space on extent to write it. So what happens, there's a one more extent is allocated and then you know, whatever new record I will add into table B that will be returned to that new extent. And those combination of those extent together will make segment for this particular table B. And then combination of those all segments within my table space will make a table space. And then combination of table space makes my database.
So this is typically how the data is stored at my database. Uh, each each and every transaction, what we do at table table level, that will be written into exactly to the data blocks in a row piece. And again, each row piece. If I talk about each of this block, you can see each of this block what it contains. Row data. Row data is actual data. Whatever we do, like select star or insert into employee A, insert into uh, table A, insert into table B. Whatever we do, that is actual data. And there's some uh, free space for future update, like insert. If I, if I do some insert, it may come here if it is able to fit here. And if I do some uh, update uh, of any existing data, it will it will be used for that. And there's a block header, and that block header contains uh, the pointers and vectors of my each uh, row and row chain and row piece. All the data, which block has which data, which row has which block. For example, this data has around three rows. All three rows pointers will be pointed in my block header. This is typically each block, what all it contains: row data, free space, and you know block header. And then, uh, if you understand about this extent and this, uh, you know, blocks and tables and segments, so now we will uh, actually uh, deal with the table spaces, right? So I already explained about system and sysocs or uh, system data files are mandatory, and uh, temp is like a temporary purpose, like sorting and you know ascending and descending are the temporary purpose that will be used, and undo is for you know holding holding my old images. And you know, for the recovery in you know, those scenarios, it will be used. An example is optional, and default dummy schemas will be available there. And user schema is the one with default for all the uh, new users, or you can have any any table space of your own. These are like typically default table space in any of the the new database. So now we will create a new table space called TBS1. And before that, we'll we'll list out what are the table space uh, our database has, right? If I do this one, see system, see socks, undo, temp, users. So I don't have that example. This is optional, right? So these are like uh, five table space we have. Like we will create now. Uh, uh, before that, let's see. Uh, okay, let's see this one. Okay, see here, right? Table space system has this data file, and see socks has this data file, and users has this data file, and undo has this data file. Right, so this four has this one. This temp temp does not have whenever needed. It will create its own data file. Okay, fine. Now, now I will create a TBS one here. So now I'll do of one MB in size. It is for creating your new table space. Right, table space created. So if you run this query again, you can see TBS one and it is allocated to default under you know u01 location if you set your db recovery file dest and uh, you know those it will create inside my data file don't worry about where it got created and all we will uh, you know fix this later but the point here is the moment you create your table space tbs1 tbs1 created and you assigned your data file and the data file is default uh, you know got created into uh, this particular uh, u01 so we will uh, set that one uh, there's a you know uh, uh, one one of the parameter called uh, you know uh, recovery file dest and the uh, uh, db file dest. So that if you set it to data disk group, it will create inside data disk group. The point here is you will be able to create your data file now. So now uh, altering. So now this this particular user table space has uh, this temp TBS one table space one has one data file TBS one data. And suppose uh, if I want to add, this is full now. So I did some insert, update, delete, and this table space, and it is full and running out of the space. And then I can add one more data file to that, and I can I can get one more MB. So I will do this one. Give me okay. I will run this one. Auto extend on means you no need to add any more data file. If you do, if you add this data file too. And you know it will be if that data file two is full and automatically it extended on on one more MB. Right, so uh, uh, it is best practice. This is not the best practice to make auto extend on because some random data is writing into your database. Your table space will keep growing. So always don't uh, uh, make this auto extend on until unless you are sure about that. So always uh, don't give this, and you know you have control on 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 DBA. Whenever people say that you know my table space is full, and then you can manually add the data file. 
right so added now if i run the same query i will see two data files for the one table space you can see undo tbs1 has this particular data file here and undo tbs1 again has this particular data file here undo tbs has two data files here that is altering you cannot keep adding that one and then uh, dropping your table space like drop table space tbs1 if you do this one it will drop only table space but data will be still available at your database that will be no use at all so always whenever you are deciding to drop your table space you have to do including content so it means it will drop all the data and data files associated to that particular table space drop table space tbs1 including content so if you if i query now you won't see that particular table space you can see tbs1 is no more exist right so that is about dropping and you know some of the basic operation you viewing your table space use a db underscore table space this is what we have seen so far here you can see this listing out and there's a one more view db underscore data underscore file you can get the table space name and file name where they are located right so table space name and data file name and what is the size of each uh, uh, data file you can you can use the select table space and data file and bytes it will give you uh, you know what size of that you can see here right i will just uh, column oh sorry column file name for a 50 and if i query that again you can see these are the table space and these are the files and these are the mb 800 MB, 500 MB, and 5 MB, and you know, 65 MB. These are like you know you can see the uh, you know size. You can bytes is a column that you can divide bytes into uh, you know uh, uh, KB and you know uh, MB, and you can you can list out in the MB. So that's about uh, managing your table space and uh, you know how you can uh, create. So as I said, DB create file dest. DB create file dest if you define. If I do show parameter db underscore create underscore file underscore dash. If you if you set this okay create show parameter db create I'll do db create db create file dash is plus data. So if you define this one plus data so ideally your or whatever data files defines the location of your default file system directory for your data files and the temporary data files and then db recovery file dest uh, you know if you see the alter system set db recovery file dest and plus data the moment you do create table space tbs1 by default it has to go under my uh, you know plus data so whereas in our case when when we created uh, uh, table space it got into uh, you know user own location so don't worry about that because i will explain why it went into user own because there's a precedency you are giving even though if you create your data file uh, dash and then you know it is it is created on local file system that is because of that omf I, i'll tell you that what exactly how it works so it is as simple as that like right alter system set db you can set that one and then you can create you don't need to give on any path. So if you see this particular, if you observe this one, right, you you are giving this particular uh, you know data file, and then it is going to that. Uh, it is going inside my uh, you know user on path. So if you define create table space TBS one, I'll show you here now. You don't need to define any of the file name and nothing. So just do create table space TBS one. And the moment you do it, I will query that now. See, TBS1 is under my data file, under my data disk group, right? So what 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 is the different you observed here? Create table space TBS1. So you are just mentioning the table space name. So default, it is going to data directory. That is because I have set db create file just as a data. And it has defined its own naming convention. Where what happens if you hard code your naming convention like uh, you know I'll show you that what we did. If you hard code your naming convention like tb data file name like tbs data file, if you give this one, it will go to the local 
Oracle Home and under DBS and it will get created there. What you need to do, if you want to define your data file, you need to give this particular data file location plus data URL, and then whatever the file name you want to give the full path when you are giving your own name or else you don't want to do all those giving naming convention and all you just give the table space name OMF Oracle managed file system, right? Well, that is the advantage of OMF Oracle managed file system will decide it's smart enough to decide internally and it will define all the naming convention and it will create for you. You know, it will be ease of management, right? You don't need to do any, uh, any of these tasks. So Oracle will manage this internally. So that is the advantage of, you know, defining this DB create file list and this OMF Oracle managed files. Right, so that's it for the today's session and for the quiz time now, OMF will help in ease of managing the database administration activities, true or false? Answer is, of course, it's a true, just now I explained. So we are just creating create table space TPS one, internally Oracle will decide, uh, you know, what name I can give, how I can manage. Internally, it is smart enough to decide and it will be, it is easy for DBS to manage uh, all the administrative activities rather than, you know, scratching our head and, you know, defining the names and all those, right? So that's for, uh, that's about the uh, table space and then managing our data structures. And now next topic is our, uh, you know, managing users. That is very, very interesting. And security factors comes into picture here, how you can controls and grants we'll see in our next uh, class. Thank you guys.